A first order differential equation that can be written in the form g of y, y prime equals f of x, or g of y, y prime equals f of x dx, where y is a function of x, is called a separable differential equation. Similarly, a first order differential equation of the form the differential dy dx is equal to a function of entirely x, call it g, and a function entirely y, call it h, is said to be separable. Separable differential equations. Once we determine that um, something is of the form, this is the method we're going to go about. We're going to take the first form that we had. Sure. Uh, g of y, a function entirely of y, y prime, is equal to a function entirely of x. What are we going to do? We're going to take our prime notation, we'll switch it to Leibniz notation, okay, and then what are we going to do after that? We're going to separate our differential. All right, sure. And then after we have a function entirely of y, we're going to try to integrate that with respect to y. A function entirely of x, we're going to integrate that with respect to x. And then what are we going to do after that? In order to get a function um, for our dependent variable y, we're going to solve for y. And then what's that going to do? It's going to get us a function. Well now, I don't want to be just accused of doing the easy ones. Uh-huh. This is our second example in separable differential equations. Okay, so what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to um, separate our differential. Here on this one, we have some initial constraints so that we can find um, an exact, well, a roundabout with decimal approximations function of y or of x for y. Sure, but we'll deal with that later. Right now we're presented with this guy, which is almost separated. I have my differential separated. Now I just gotta get my y's on one side and my x's on the other. Ignore the integration signs. It's a long problem. I had to step some skips. Yes, so what did I do? New is in blue. Okay, so I divided both sides by the sign of y plus one, and that's how it got down there. Mm-hmm. And I divided both sides by e to the x plus 1, and that's how it got down there. Now that I have something entirely of y and something entirely of x, I can integrate each, so, each side. And that's how I got right there. So then we need to talk about how to integrate each one of those pieces. Each one of those pieces is kind of like a u sub. So what am I going to let u be? I'm going to let u be this denominator here. See, I said u is sine y plus 1. Now what? I take the derivative. <coughs> So then du is the cosine of y dy. That allows me to make my substitution. My u up top, my du up top, and my u on the bottom. So we're like, how do we integrate du over u? Well, we know it integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, so then that's down here. That's the natural log of the sine y plus one. Where's your plus c? I'm gonna put it on the other side. Okay, so then how does this guy integrate? Uh-huh, um, Looks like I'm going to let this be my u. Uh-oh. 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 dv is right there. Okay. So then what? This whole damn thing is crap. I forgot a minus sign. Wait for it. Can I put the minus there? And then that changes this entirely. Damn. Okay, we're back. So where were we? We were integrating this guy. Ah, yes. Because I had that minus sign on the outside, I needed to put that out there. Okay, so this guy integrates to the natural log, the minus the natural log of e to the, the absolute value, e to the x plus 1, plus that constant. I'm only putting one constant for both sides. Now what do I want to do? I want to find c. So I'm going to back that math up. I'm going to get it all on one side. And then I see I have the natural log of the sine y, and nu is in blue. So then here I have plus the natural log of e to the x plus 1. That's going to be c. Now what I do see is I have the sum of the logarithms. So I know that that's going to be the log of the product, and that's where it takes me. Bam! So now I have the log of the product, the log of these guys. Okay, and that's going to be my c. Now what I want to do is I want to find c, because I want to find this. 
um, function approximately. So I'm using my original con constraint to find c. Remind you that this is um, y of x is y. So what's my x? It's 0. What's my y? It's 3. It's a function of x for y. So what do I do? Everywhere I see an x, I put a 0. And everywhere I see a y, I put a 3. Oh, wait. So I took my calculator and I pounded that out and I found that c was approximately this guy. So now that I've made that approximation, I need to put a disclaimer, I love exact answers. Your book probably has decimals, that's why I went decimals. Okay, so then ignore that e, it's a small board, I had to step some skips, yes. So I went back and I put my variables in there, all I did was replace c. c was uh, 0.5978. Great. So then how am I going to solve for y? I have to get rid of that natural logarithm. To get rid of that natural logarithm, I need to e it up. Right. I'm exponentiating both sides. Okay. With the appropriate base, I chase the property of e to the natural log of the argument is the argument. Okay. And that's going to be approximately 1.812 uh, thing. Okay, so then I need to solve for y by dividing by this guy. Oh, I stepped a skip because I also subtracted a 1. Oh, we need to get it all inverted. Okay, we're back. Um, I take the inverse sign of both sides and y is going to be approximately the inverse sign of nastiness. Remember, this is a function of x. And you know, box and flower.